What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the unified kill chain. So this is a continuation for the talk we started about cyber threat intelligence. So in the previous videos we talked about cyber threat intelligence and we discussed some of the cyber threat intelligence frameworks. Uh, specifically we discussed the diamond model. Today we're going to discuss the unified kill chain. Okay. Now the unified kill chain is very similar to the cyber kill chain if you have heard of the cyber kill chain developed by uh, lockheed martin it's very similar to unified kill chain but the unified kill chain is actually more detailed so basically unified kill chain is more detailed and it has more phases so in the unified kill chain we have 18 phases to an attack, 18 phases. We're going to discuss these phases one by one. So remember guys, that the unified kill chain and the cyber kill chain are not competing each other. They're not competing. They're complementing each other in studying the attacker's motives, understanding the techniques, tactics, procedures, and overall strengthening the security measure of an organization of a, or a network. So basically, we use either unified kill chain, cyber kill chain, diamond model, it doesn't matter. What matter is we put a profile or we create a profile for the adversary and successfully profile an attack. So basically, let's discuss the phases okay of uh, the phases of uh, that are discussed in the unified kill chain, the phases of an attack from the perspective of the unified kill chain. Okay. Now so the first phase is reconnaissance or recon so reconnaissance exists in the cyber kill chain as well we have the same uh, phase and it's the first phase in both the unified kill chain and the cyber kill chain so in the phase of reconnaissance guys we gather information about the target so here we are after information or of the target of the victim or target okay so what are the information that we can gather under the reconnaissance phase? So some of the information can be first, um, ports, open ports, ports, services running on the target, emails, contact names, Also, we may stumble upon credentials, open credentials, of course. And sometimes we can look for network topologies. So these are the kind of the, the type of information we are after when we perform reconnaissance under the unified kill chain. From the perspective of security, when we discuss the reconnaissance, we aim to understand how what are the information the attacker has gathered about the targets. What about the network? Okay. Now this is the first phase, which is reconnaissance. The next phase two, it is the weaponization. And it is the same phase under the cyber kill chain. So we have it in both the cyber and the unified kill chain. So what's happening here? What is the attacker doing under the weaponization phase? The attacker in the weaponization phase, they set up the infrastructure necessary to perform the attack. An example would be setting up the C2 server. Okay, setting up the server. Yeah, it's the same actually. So that server receives the uh, information or the data from the target. Setting up the reverse shells. Right. So these, this is what it means when we say weaponization. We make the, the attacker makes the server ready okay and prepares set of reversals and payloads to use in the attack okay the third phase here is the social engineering now we start with the phases that are different from the cyber kill chain so in the cyber kill chain the third phase is delivery but here the third phase is weaponization uh, sorry social engineering so as you know guys, social engineering is the 
manipulation of people to reveal information so basically here the attacker would manipulate the target to reveal inf specific information what kind of information or what what are some of the techniques that are employed in the social engineering for example in social engineering we aim to make the user open malicious attachments so malicious attachments attachments um, revealing credentials user credentials let's do it like that user credentials of course harvesting user credentials can be done by sending social engineering or employing social engineering through emails sometimes uh, one of the methods that are employed in social engineering is calling the victim or the target and revealing information on the phone and that's very similar what Kevin Metnick did so calling the target okay so I the attacker set up the weaponization set up the uh, command and control server gathered information from the target like uh, user credentials or maybe they made the user open a malicious attachment now comes the fourth phase which is exploitation so it's very self-explanatory guys it's a taking it's a attacker taking advantage of a vulnerability present in a target so how does how does this happen so basically let's say the attacker sent an email okay prepared to come and control server sent an email as a malicious attachment okay and the person or the target opened the attachment so what's happening here the exploitation starts an example of exploitation is basically one uploading reverse shell reverse shell okay or web shell can be a web shell right uh, or or exploiting a vulnerability now in the case of exploiting vulnerability sometimes the attacker does not need to interact with the target it means sometimes the attacker skips the social engineering phase okay they just gather information okay about the system they prepare the server and they exploit the CVE right away. So they, they perform the exploitation right away. It depends on the target, depends on the environment and what the attacker uh, has gathered about the targets. Okay. Now after exploitation, we have persistence. Also persistent is self-explanatory guys. It's the stage when the attacker actually uh, tries to maintain access to a system okay now methods to maintain access to a system meaning persistence is backdoors one of the popular methods that can perform to maintain access to their target or they can create accounts admin accounts okay now after persistence we have another phase so let's open a new page and discuss the phase six the phase six is defense evasion and this phase does not exist in the cyber kill chain it's only a unified kill chain so in defense evasion the attacker aims to evade all protections like evading firewalls okay and specifically also evading antiviruses okay now the the purpose of evading firewalls and antivirus detections are miscellaneous and uh, there are so many actually so basically one of the method one of the reasons is that the attacker may aim to exfiltrate data from the victim to their command and control server they set up in the weaponization phase so they need to evade the firewall because firewalls prevent data uh, from coming off the network ideally of course and sometimes they need to evade antivirus detections to perform persistence using backdoors so that's the purpose of defense evasion okay seven we have command 
and control so in command control what's happening here guys is when the attacker set up the server in the step 2 okay now in the step 7 they send commands to the victim and execute them through the reversals so basically this is what uh, the command and control means so they aim here to execute commands on the target an example is who am I when you execute who am I on a target you are performing you are in the seventh stage according to the unified kill chain again exfiltrating data for example sending data so exfil data it's also a command by the way okay now step 8 is the pivoting or stage 8 is the pivoting so pivoting is uh, can be similar to lateral movements okay so pivoting is moving through the network from one target to another target so basically the the purpose is here so basically in, in normally you have compromised one target in pivoting you try to do lateral movement lateral movement to other targets other databases other systems that's what does it mean when we say pivoting okay now nine we have the discovery it can be a bit confusing to say what does it mean discover we just discovered everything about the target so what's happening here you guys adversary or the attacker would uncover information about the system and the network it's connected to so in this stage the knowledge base would be built from the active user accounts the permissions granted for example the application and software in use so here we gather information okay after we gain access to the target so it's post compromise post compromise discovery okay 10 is the privilege escalation and that's where discovery is very important so in privilege escalation as you know guys we aim to move our um, permissions or access level from user into root to do that we need to perform discovery we need to enumerate the system from the inside that's why discovery is kind of uh, prerequisite for privilege escalation or precursor so let's move now to the stage number 10 now stage number 11 so in stage 11 it is execution So in the execution phase, we deploy here scripts, okay, malicious code, and make create schedule tasks to maintain access. It's kind of similar to the persistence phase. Now 12, we have credential access. In credential access, it's similar to um, using Mimikatz to dump credentials. So here we aim to dump the credentials of the system or of the target, let me say. An example of is using Mimikatz. 13 is lateral movement. And lateral movement is similar to pivoting, guys. We are moving further on the network we are ex extending our access to the network or expanding the access through the network okay now let's take a practical example or before taking a practical example let's complete the level so we have 11 13, 12 13 so 14 here is the collection now after stage 13 we start to perform actions on objectives in the cyber kill chain so it all starts in the collection okay so here we start to think of what kind of information the attacker can uh, seek or what are, what kind of information they are after so here the collection of data from the target so target data 15 it's the exfiltration 
this is where the exfiltration starts so in the exfiltration we move the data here the data is moved to the attacker server okay 16 it is the impact so here we study what are the impacts of the attack that the attacker has performed against the system okay so basically here that's from the security perspective but if the adversary seeks to compromise for example um, here we study the impact from the perspective of the CIA triad CIA confidentiality integrity availability for example the adversary seeks to compromise the integrity and availability of the data assets they would for example um, destroy these assets uh, disrupt business operations sometimes they wipe disks they encrypt the system using ransomware so here they perform the, the impact will be clear after the exfiltration if they are only interested in gathering data they would skip the impact it will be only the impact in this case will be only affecting the confidentiality if they want to affect the integrity and availability they would also disrupt business operations like wiping off data encrypting data using ransomware and the last state is the objectives objectives so here the attacker will try to achieve the strategic goal for the attack they have started for example if it was financially motivated they may seek to encrypt files and systems with ransomware right depending on the uh, motivation so under the objective the impact we understand the motive of the attack motive of the attack right why the attack happened in the first place okay so after we finish this let's take a practical example and go through a live example and apply it on the Nephite kill chain so let's click on view site okay deploy the static site attached to the task you will need to match the various actions of an attacker to the correct phase of the unified kill chain framework to reveal the flag the attacker uses tools to gather information about a system what phase of the unified kill chain is this so it's clearly the reconnaissance phase because they are trying to gather information about the system the attacker installs a malicious script to allow them remote access at a later date so here they are trying to maintain persistence so it's persistence it's not exploitation it's not pivoting they are they are not exploiting a cve and then they're not moving further or moving through other targets so it's persistence the hacked machine is being controlled from an attacker's own server okay so this is command and control the attacker uses the hacked machine to access other servers on the same network so here they pivot through the network they move to other targets the attacker steals a database and sells this to a third party so here impact it's not an impact because they are not discussing what uh, what's what uh, what uh, what are the impact on the cia the confidentiality integrity and availability execution it's not execution because they are not executing any uh scripts or backdoors to maintain access it's action on objectives that's the uh that's the what's the strategic goal of the attack to, to steal databases and sell it to a third party and if all the answers were correct you would be able to reveal the flag guys i hope you find this useful and i will definitely see you in the next video